a creepy kid movie without a creepy kid. Hmm. So Omen 3 The Final Conflict tells the story of Damien Thorne now as an adult as he tries to prevent the second coming of Christ. Welcome back everybody to the Omen franchise. If you're just joining me, I have reviewed Omen and Omen 2. Those are live on the channel right now. And of course, after this, we've got Omen 4 The Awakening and the 2006 Omen remake, as well as a franchise ranking, as well as the 31 on 31 ranking this Halloween. For those that don't know what that is, me and a couple of my friends, every single Halloween, we get together, we rank a bunch of horror franchises together. This year, the theme is Unholy Terror. So we got Omen, Exorcist, Shining, Poltergeist, movies along those lines. So if you're a fan of The Omen and you wanna see all of that, be sure to hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss it. Now, Omen 3, much like Omen 2, and what eventually will be Omen 4, are all first time watches for me. I've only seen the original and the remake, and I absolutely loved the original. Omen 2, some interesting directions. It's certainly an enjoyable slasher type movie, but uh, definitely a downgrade from the first one. Now with this one, being that Sam Neill is playing Damien Thorne, he's the main thing that made me intrigued in watching this movie. I don't know what the direction of it was going to be. I didn't know if it was going to follow that slasher aspect, if it was going to be more of a political movie now that he's an adult. But I've always loved Sam Neill. Who doesn't? And uh, him playing Damien Thorne honestly was the one thing that I figured if anything, I'd walk away praising in this movie. Well, now that I've seen it, let's talk about the positives for Omen 3, The Final Conflict. And the only positive that I can give you about this movie, the sole solitary redeeming factor, is that Jerry Goldsmith's score is still awesome. This is the guy that did the original score. I believe he won an Oscar. He came back for two, which I think I forgot to mention in that review. And he came back one final time for this movie. So the score is still great. It's still that iconic Damien Omen score. It gives you those emotional feels that you're looking for in a movie like this. It's got that tear. It's got that holiness. It's got that operatic chorus flavor to it. It's a good score. This movie, however, will not be getting a good score. Because now that I talk about the negatives of this movie, and there are a plenty, this movie was so goddamn boring. Because The Omen is a franchise about a creepy antichrist child, and people trying to murder a child and stop a child. Well, when you have him as an adult, you lose that entire element of this franchise. Take him. That was the entire iconic nature of the omen, was an evil little kid. What do we do about this little kid? He couldn't possibly be evil. Look how cute he is. That whole struggle, that is the omen. So when you take that away and you make Damien Thorne now an adult, you relegate this movie to being an evil politician movie, which could not be less interesting to me if it tried. And it does not help at all that Sam Neill gives the worst performance that I have ever seen this guy give. I thought that he was okay when he was like interacting with other characters. And to be honest, I was kind of warned by my buddy Brian Lomax that he gives a terrible performance. And I'm like, come on, Sam Neill? How's that possible? Then it comes to the monologue scenes of which there's like maybe two or three in this movie where Sam Neill has to talk to a statue or talk out loud, talking to Jesus. And he's just monologuing and it is rough. A fallen angel, banished, reviled. I am going to drive deeper the thorns into your rancid carcass, you profaner of vices. So the one element of this movie that I thought would be the saving grace was actually one of its biggest detriments which was the performance of Sam Neill and the, the adult characterization of Damien Thorne. It was terrible. And outside of removing the evil child element, the other iconic element of this franchise, which was the, the omens, the accidental kills, the Final Destination style deaths of all the characters, which is funny, I call them Final Destination style because now they're watching it, clearly Final Destination are omen style kills, but nonetheless, you don't have any of that here. You get one death at the beginning of this movie that is a suicide, which didn't even make a whole lot of sense to me, but that whole element of that looming threat 
to where if you start to suspect Damien for any reason, something's coming out of the sky and taking your fucking head off. That is gone from this movie. So it's like, what the hell is left? What is left? You've taken everything away. There's no tension. That foreboding sense of dread that builds throughout the movies as Damien gets closer to his plot, non-existent here. This is barely even a horror film. If it wasn't for the fact that they were talking about the devil so much, you would consider this like a political thriller. Disciples of the Watch, I stand before you in the name of the one who is cast out from heaven, but is alive in me. And probably the biggest problem with this film is that even if you try to get past all of that, or if you just stomach all of that and say, well, at least I get to see how this all wraps up, being that this is the final conflict, the final conflict, that big, you know, epic battle between Damien and Christ or Damien and Jesus, however they decide to visualize that, that we've been waiting for and we've been anticipating definitely through this entire runtime, which was a slog, but all the way back to the beginning, it, it's so anticlimactic, it is so boring and weak. It's barely even a climax. I mean, for all of the times throughout three movies now where anybody that even came close to being a threat to Damien was taken out either by a disciple or by nature or an accident to something. This guy was absolutely impenetrable. To have him turn his back to yell at Jesus and have random woman who's introduced in this movie just get a, a moment or two just to stab him right in the back and that's it, that's it, that, that, that's it? That's how you finally defeat Damien? How many people have tried to stab this fucking dude throughout these three movies and cannot get anywhere close to him, but somehow she's able to in the most, in, in the least exciting way possible? Fuck you, that's your, that's your climax, that's the final conflict. <laughs> But unfortunately, my biggest problem with this movie is a subjective thing. You know, we all have that thing that we don't like seeing in movies that we can't stomach or that just ruins the enjoyment for us. We all have it. For me, it's putting babies or young kids in harm. You know, innocent ones. Uh, obviously, I can, I can tolerate it in the original Omen because that fucking kid's evil. And that's the whole point of the movie. Even though it still stings, that's part of the horror of that film. But it comes to a point about two thirds of the way through this movie where Damien finds out that the second coming of Christ is going to come through a child that is born. And so he orders all of his disciples and followers to go and murder all of the children that were born on a specific date at a specific time. And so you get like a 10 minute stretch where they're pushing carriages into oncoming traffic and they're cutting oxygen off to babies that are in, uh, like, you know, like preemie babies that are in uh, intensive care. They're showing mothers that are like overcome with a trance and picks up a pot of boiling water right above an infant. Absolutely destroyed this movie for me. I, I cannot take that. Like I can watch it. It's not like I go throw up or anything like that, but that ruins any sense of enjoyment of which I really wasn't even having any at that point. I, I can't do it. So as soon as they brought that element into the film and even though they don't physically show what happens to these kids, they show enough of a suggestion absolutely destroyed this movie for me and pissed me off. So all in all guys, not a whole lot to discuss with this movie. It's a terrible film. It's a terrible sequel. I couldn't understand anybody that tried to explain to me that this was a good omen follow-up in any way, shape, or form. And like I said, because it has that one element that I just cannot stand in a movie, this movie crossed over the realm of just being a bad sequel into a movie that personally pissed me off and left me not only unsatisfied, but angry. So if you're a fan of the Omen franchise and you want to see how this all wraps up, just stop watching after two and make up the final conflict for yourself because any idea that you have is miles better than the ideas that they actually put to film in Omen 3, The Final Conflict. So regarding this third chapter, unfortunately I'm going to have to say, fuck this movie. So what do you guys think of The Final Conflict? Are you a fan of this one? Is this your favorite Omen sequel? Does that whole slaying of babies for 10 minutes straight affect you on the way that it affects me? Like I said, it's a me thing. I know it's a me thing, so a lot of you probably aren't bothered with it, but I'm curious. Let me know down below. And how bad is Omen 4 about to be? Because I'm about to start watching it just after I turn the camera off. <laughs>
Please like and share this video and be sure to hit that subscribe button if you don't want to miss all of that Omen content, including the 31 on 31 ranking this Halloween. If you guys enjoyed this series, enjoyed this video to the point that you want to financially support this channel and get exclusive content and exclusive perks for that contribution, please check out my Patreon page down below. There's a bunch of different tiers, there's monthly subscriptions, there's yearly subscriptions, a lot of different options, and I do greatly appreciate your consideration for that. Thank you so much for watching as always. And remember, opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean that you have to be.